So I'm Peter Jackson, and um, in between uh, producing Lord of the Rings movies. <laughs> Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Pre-Accident Podcast. I am your host, Todd Conklin, and you are in for a treat today. I'm serious. This is totally a treat-laden day, so get ready. Get your treat basket ready to accept and receive some treats, because today we're going to talk to Peter Jackson, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. And I like this podcast a lot because Peter is just like the rest of us. He's not some special fancy pants researcher, you know, written 56 books or, you know, has a professorship in Australia or travels. Peter's just a human performance guy in a big utility company, and that's what he does. He works with real-time people who do real-time work with real high-risk operations every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time. But I like Peter because... He came to this legitimately really out of the upside, and he'll talk about that a little bit. But I like how he sort of thinks about this as a journey, and there's much he shares with it. Actually, a lot. It's a really good podcast. You're going to enjoy it immensely. So for me, life is grand. My year of letting go is actually um, relatively successful. I'm getting rid of crap all the time, Uh, cleaving out um, things that I don't want to do anymore or – things that I don't want to have anymore, things I don't want to be in charge of anymore. I'm kind of letting the universe take control of stuff, and we'll see how it works. It's hard to remember to do because all the stuff that you surround yourself with kind of becomes a part of, uh, you know, you, you, your, your gig. It's, it's your thing, and that's where stuff happens. And so you got your gig and your thing, and you just kind of manage it and, and go with it. But I'll keep you in touch. I mean, I, I think what's going well. Um, how'd you like the Hallnagel podcast? Did you enjoy it? I thought you might. It's a, it's a grand one to be certain. It's, uh, it's really fun. There's been a bunch of great podcasts this year. Thank you so much. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. This is a really good starter. This would be a great one to start on, and you're more than welcome. We're open and affirming and glad to have you. If you've been around a while, thanks for sticking it out. I know it gets uh, – after a while, you get kind of tired of listening to them, but it's okay to take a break, and you don't have to listen to the ones you don't want to. I mean, it's, you know, nobody's forcing you. You don't have to have 100% attendance, but the numbers are gigantic, which also freaks me out, but – that's for a different topic. Let's um, let's quit yammering on and get into to what Peter has to say. This is Peter Jackson, and uh, he's he's just a great guy. I think you'll like him just as much as I do by the end of this little podcast. So sit back and relax unless you're driving, and then lean up and both hands on the wheel. And uh, let's see how this takes us down the road to uh, high reliability, system safety, safety to new view, human performance. So I'm Peter Jackson, and um, in between uh, producing Lord of the Rings movies, I am a human performance coordinator for Georgia Power, which is uh, part of Southern Company. We're one of the largest utility companies in the uh, in the country. But um, on top of that, I am a father of three little ones and um, and a husband to a beautiful wife. So what's a human performance coordinator do? You coordinate human performance? I just do work better than everybody else <laughs> and then tell them this is how you should do it. No, I, I don't do any work. I actually get to listen to the people who do do the work. And that's, I think, the coolest part. So, um, I, you know, I think it's really a, a lot about learning and teaching. So learning the context of how employees get work done and their struggles and also learning where the blue line is. So, you know, a lot of the people that probably listen to the podcast know all about the black line and the blue line, um, how work is imagined versus how work gets done. And for us, that's been a really an eye opener and, and I would say a game changer, uh, both for our leadership, but also for our employees to be able to admit to where the blue line is. And to be able to to say, hey, if we really want to get better, um, we weren't really making any progress punishing our employees towards improvement. Uh, we weren't really making any progress even celebrating long streaks of no injuries or no operational events. Um, because as soon as something would happen, then we'd all say, well, where did that come from? And we realized um, really by learning these concepts and principles around human performance and the new view 
that we were we were missing what was right under our nose the whole time, which was, you know, how, how does work actually happen? You know, not not the way our procedures say, um, not the way we tell our employees work will happen, but the way it really gets done. So it's almost like we're, we're finally having more honest conversations. What do you think? Because you guys are a big, I mean, you're a big, cumbersome, bureaucratic company. I mean, I, I guess I don't mean that in a mean way, but but I mean that in sort of a neutral way. I mean, it's, just, it's a big organization. What was it that you think um, was the impetus for for sort of moving in this different direction? So, I mean, I I would say just just being really frank, um, the numbers. You know, that, that's usually what gets people to start thinking. Well, maybe the way we're doing things isn't isn't exactly ideal. So, you know, like a lot of companies, we had made progress with um, these programs around, you know, moving towards zero injuries. We called it Target Zero. And uh, we had made some good progress. And there was some good foundational ground laid, I think. Um, but over time, we saw our, our numbers of injuries start to kind of um, really level out almost to the point where they started going up. And so, you know, at first our leadership said, well, we need to make sure that we're just messaging ourselves better. We need to make sure everyone knows to just take this more seriously than they were before. Maybe we were lulled into complacency. But meanwhile, our workforce was changing immensely. So, you know, all of our boomers were starting to retire. We had lots of folks in the field that had very little experience, um, lots of frontline leadership that didn't have experience. And so what we were seeing is that, that we were starting to have new new injuries, new events that we didn't see coming and we didn't anticipate. Um, I, I really think that, that there was more of an open mind because we really didn't see what we were doing as being as effective as it was before. And, and our goals drove what we were behaving. You know, how we were, how we were trying to get things done, I think, really drove, was driven by our goals. And so as long as our goals said, hey, we're going to aspire to this, um, we were at first trying to, I think, just kind of power our way through. And when, when that wasn't effective, uh, that was when somebody said, well, hey, what else, what else is being done outside of um, our world? How, uh, how's, how's it been? What, what's your success look like for you guys? Because you've had some successes for sure. Yeah. I mean, really the only reason I even uh, agreed to come on the podcast. Other than I tricked you. <laughs> yes. You told me there, there was ice cream here. Right. Yeah. And so that works for my kids all the time. It works for everyone. <laughs> this is true. So it was really just the fact that we've, we've started to see a difference in um, how we look at failure, how we looked at human error. And so this is from our leadership. So the, the questions that they ask and even the, the things that they say behind closed doors are a lot different than they used to be. I mean, uh, the desire to understand, even if they think, you know, I don't know what that guy was doing when he, when he screwed that up, they are, they're reserving judgment until they learn more, until they understand more. And um, that's really building a lot of trust, I think, in the organization. So that's been good. I think employees, you know, they want to do good work. But even sometimes they turn on each other. When mm -hmm. something goes wrong, you know, you might have a lineman and say, well, man, I'd have never done that. Mm -hmm. that. That guy was being an idiot. And we're starting to get to the point where we're seeing beyond the headline. And so now employees are saying, well, yeah, well, tell me what really happened. And I still think the guy was an idiot, but, but now you're telling me the deeper story? Right. Oh, yeah, I actually have done work that same way. I don't admit it when something when it goes wrong for somebody else. But now that you've got me in a room with a bunch of different people, and, you know, learning teams have really made a huge impact there with helping us understand the deeper story and then tell it in a way that, you know, I think moves the folks who actually do the work. Otherwise, they just kind of get caught up with, you know, well, hey, I saw the headline. You know, a guy was an idiot. And he, why did he send that ballistic missile alert text message, right? And, um, and then we move on. We move on after the headline. But in, in our case, we're starting to really get that deeper story out there. How are you building in, um, uh, I don't want to say the word expertise, but how are you, how are you creating a knowledge base of people who understand this human performance, this new view stuff within, within your organization? Because to me, creating the people who have the fluency, I'm trying not to use that word, but I have yeah. to, the fluency to sort of have this conversation is really a challenge. And you guys have done a really good job at that, I think. 
Yeah, so we've um, we've really found, you know, you know, at first when we started going down this path, this journey, uh, we wanted folks to help us with training, right? So train the trainer, you know, and then let's get everybody trained. And what we realized um, once we started saying, well, what's next? And for us, what was next was learning teams. So now our employees have that foundational knowledge of the new view. Well, how do we get learning teams to, to kind of stick? And what we realized, and something that I heard Bill Hoyle say to, you know, this week earlier was that, you know, in, in his world of being one of the foremost investigators, uh, he, he said that, you know, your ability to do them is both an art and a science. And that's what we found was, was finding employees, some, some of them were leaders, some of them were just individual contributors, who were able to blend that art and science of how to lead a discussion, but then how to get the hell out of the way so that, you know, employees can actually talk and tell you what's really happening. That's been, um, I think, not just a challenge, but a success. So for us, we found that our, our frontline folks, uh, um, our safety advisors on the safety side, man, they've, they've just been jam up, you know, so their ability to connect with our employees and not be seen anymore as the sheriff's coming in to, here's, here's where you guys are not following the rules. I'm doing the safety observation and here's all the things that I'm seeing wrong, but instead say, Hey, um, let's try to understand how work happens. Let's, let's try to understand, um, what you were thinking as you were doing, doing the, uh, your task or your activity. And, and I think their ability to not just build trust with their, their employees or peers that they support, but to then, integrate that with the new view, um, that's been more effective than anything that I could have done getting up, you know, in front of a bunch of people and talking. So it, it's having those boots on the ground who really understand. So we pour into them and we watch them go run and make it something brilliant. What do you, uh, <clears throat> what advice would you give a company that's just kind of starting to just shift this this viewpoint from kind of old school to new school? Yeah, um, I would tell you that just remember that it's possible. So, um, you know, one of one of my good friends, Stephanie Swindle, who you've had on the podcast, she always says, you know, Voice like honey. Voice yeah. like honey. She's got a voice like honey. So um, she always says that, uh, you know, you can, you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days on this journey. So you're going to have a day where you just make so much progress or you see a middle manager whose light bulb just goes on. And it wasn't because of something a leader told him or her is because it just started making sense to them. Um, and then you'll have days where someone says, well, you know, Hey, we've got to hold this guy accountable, which, you know, in our world was just, um, you know, kind of a code word for, we got to put discipline in, in, into the equation. Um, I never thought I'd see the day where learning became more of a priority than discipline and accountability. I mean, our, our culture, I mean, not just our company culture, but our culture in the South, the way we all grew up was that, hey, if you messed up, you know, you'll be held responsible at the house. You know, daddy's going to take out the belt or, you know, mama's going to say, hey, here's, here's what's about to happen to you. And I still love you, but I'm doing this to you for a reason. And I think... That, that mindset of our employees are like our children, breaking that, I think, is key to helping people understand, you know, these are professionals. These men and women that we work with, they actually know their jobs. They're not little kids. My eight-year-old, my six-year-old, my four-year-old, they are not like my employees. And we just got so used to doing that, that, you know, daddy knows best, and I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. And you know, this spanking is because I love you, you know, and, and hey, we'll, we'll sit there for the next 35 years and hope to collect a pension and hope we only get a couple spankings, right? Well, now I think we're saying, well, you actually know your job. Help me understand it. Because I think that we can make things better if we're all sitting down at the table together. That's been huge. I think you see those, those little steps that are happening. I think you see, you know, you talk a lot about confidence and capacity, mm -hmm. right? And so one of the things that we're really proud of is as we've seen employees start to learn, as we've seen our organizations start to absorb the learning and improving mindset, it's built confidence in us. One that, hey, now we're not ignoring the blue line. 
we we want to understand the blue line, but we've had um, we've had employees who they had an injury at their location, and they they started looking at how they how someone fell off a material trailer. I mean, it was some, just a basic injury, you know, his foot slipped, he fell off, and they said, well, how do we actually get material on and off this trailer? Like, how do we really get material on and off this trailer? It's not the way it was actually designed. And, and then they, they approached me and they said, you know, what we're going to start doing is when we get new material or a tool, we're not going to say, here's what you use it for. We're, we're going to say, hey, when, what would you use this for in your daily work? And so they called that the Blue Line Review. That's cool. Yeah, so they said, you know, like, why don't we be proactive and why don't we try to lo- learn the Blue Line before something goes wrong? And, you know, it, you can call it a proactive learning team or something like that. But for us, the idea of calling it a blue line review had a different – it kind of shifted the way people thought. So when frontline employees came into the meeting, they started saying, well, I guess I have permission to tell you what I'm doing wrong, where I'm not on the black line. Because this is, this is a blue line review, right? So I can say I don't follow the procedure all the time. I don't use the tool the way it was really meant to. And um, and you start really uncovering and unmasking all those latent conditions. I mean, that's that's been really huge for us. That's remarkable. So, what's the future hold? What do you, what are you thinking about ahead? Uh, what interests you? Where are you heading? Where are they going? Just what's the future? And so, for us, I think we're just really starting to to tap into that idea of being proactive, and, and really from a from a safety aspect. Um, we're we're really just starting to go down the road of a lot of large companies that have had um, professional safety programs, safety management systems, um, critical risk plans. Those are things that are really new to us. So we're starting to introduce those. The cool thing is, though, is that we're really getting to inject human performance and the new view into how they're getting implemented. And so we don't report into safety, but we're partners with safety. We're partners with our opera, operational excellence group. Um, we've done, you know, learning teams on everything from billing errors to customer service incidents. Uh, so we're really showing that human performance is more than just safety. The new view is not just about, you know, how do we how do we minimize human errors around keeping people safe. It's about how work is getting done, and that impacts your bottom line. That impacts. Um, your work processes. So for me, as an industrial engineer by by degree, this is super cool because I'm, I'm like, this is process improvement mixed in with with culture change, and it's being brought to life in a way that's that's really influencing the company in a positive direction. So we're seeing things I think expand beyond safety. We're seeing ourselves become a little bit more proactive. And we're seeing an interest. We started this stuff all in our high-voltage transmission group and our operations group, and we're seeing a lot of interest come in from outside of that. So, you know, to me, being able to integrate that into just how work gets done at, at our company has been really meaningful, and I, I think that's where we're heading. You're a rock star, man. Anything else? Dramatic, there's a dramatic pause. No, I would just say that uh, stay the course. Okay. You know, know that you're going to have some bad days. Know that it might take it might take some people multiple times of hearing the message before it starts to click. Understand that some people may never get to that side, and and that's okay. Yeah. And um, you know what I I've, I've found that you know some people might think it's you know what we're serving is Kool Aid. But but I've I've had some of it. it. It tastes pretty damn good, you know. And and our folks are really seeing the benefit. You know, our frontline people always embrace this stuff quickly. But to be able to see um, leaders challenge this and then kind of get to the other side is has been has been really great. So just be patient with your leadership. Be patient with your employees, and you know, just know that that there there is light at the end of the tunnel. So what'd you think? I told you, did I? Not? I told you, I totally told you, I told you. You'd like, I just adore him. He's just fun, 
and what a great company, and they're just doing amazing things and constantly learning and patiently trudging forward. Small improvements add up to larger improvements. Larger improvements add up to total system improvement, and they know it. And that's what's so fun about checking in with people who do this for a living. It's easy to get frustrated, and it's easy to get impatient, and you will – you will slip backwards. I mean, it's just, it's, it, things happen. The important thing is, is stay the course, keep it in the right direction. Keep your compass always um, pointed north. Keep your, keep your lamp oiled and cleaned and, uh, and you'll move into the direction that you should move into. And, and that's pretty powerful stuff. Plus you get that, you know, that sweet kind of Atlanta accent that Peter has that, that gentlemanly way to say your baby's ugly. He's got that going for him as well. So that, 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 that's all that matters. I mean, that, that's what it's about. It is a great podcast, and I'm glad you're a part of it. Thank you, Peter. Thanks for listening to you as well. I hope you learned something great today. Have as much fun as you possibly can. And for goodness sakes, be safe. Good goes around and around.